So in this video, I want to cover my Paladin tank build for module 25. I've been running the new trial, Master Xemnid's Reliquary, and I've been optimizing my build primarily for it. However, in this video, we're going to cover a build that should fit all content, and we'll discuss when you want to go into AoE fights, when you want to be tank switches in certain trials, so on and so forth. Everything covered in this video. There'll be timestamps below where you can skip to the different chapters of the build and skip to what you're most interested in. We'll cover all the sections from your gear, companions, mounts, and so on. So first of all, those of you just want to copy and paste, don't really care for explanations. This is my current setup here with all of my gear. Stats outside of a party look like this. But when in a party, we'll get that awareness boosted by another 9% through the armor and through healers running pack tactics, along with our chain of scales, and that'll get our rating capped. And so we'll have just over 70%. For my enchantments, I'm just running with this setup here. This is generally my power setup. Then we have our boons with the stronghold boons, and then my companions and my current tab for my mounts, and then my stable. We'll go into much more detail in each of the sections. So first of all, we'll jump to our powers. Now here we have our at wills, and I'll generally just use O strike all the time, mainly for the increased threat. What you want to do is hold down your at will and just spam your shield. And by doing this, you are animation canceling your old strike, basically hitting more often and also regenerating action points quicker by blocking in combination with that. You can get your daily power within at least 20 seconds if you continually do that. You can use a keybind on PC and you can look my video up for that. Just be aware you could use shielding strike as your secondary at will whenever you have enough threat. You'll see that you have the threat of your target when you look at them and your little bubble up here above your name is red. And if everybody else's is like green or yellow, you're okay. If somebody turns to orange, you know they're just about to take the threat and you need to do something quick to make sure you have it back. As long as you have that threat, you could very well use shielding strike to regenerate your shield back quicker. For encounter powers, generally you'll be using Templar's Wrath everywhere. It has massive increased threat and allows you to very easily make sure the target's attacking you. For example, here we initiate the fight on Velindra. We use the Templar's Wrath, another Templar's Wrath called Artifacts, and then we use our third one there with our daily, and we hold the threat fairly comfortably. It's all about the Templar's Wrath combined with your daily, and you use that for threat. You have a divinity cost with that and you have a pool of a thousand so you can only be casting that three times before you have to wait to get divinity back before you can do it a fourth time. You can generally do it four times within like a few seconds because you'll generate divinity just by attacking as well. Then you need to use like vow of enmity for placing yourself on top of the threat list in case you die and also if you're in a fight where you need to switch tank so you're in a trial. And then we have binding oath for the stamina regen. If you're running up against a bunch of ads, I recommend Burning Light. You can see I have it slotted here. When I'm kiting together all these ads, I just group them up. And when you have them all grouped up, they're going to deal a lot of damage to you. So you can just stun them and they basically do nothing for like three seconds and it gives you a bit of breathing room. And you can do that when you're going against groups of ads in a dungeon and so on as well. And I would just go with this setup there for the dungeon. You could go with Relentless Avenger instead of Vow to close the gap between groups of enemies and get there quicker. And in general boss fights, it's Templars, Vow, and Binding Oath. And you can switch to like Absolution instead of Vow if you don't need something to place you on top of the threat list and you just can go with some more survivability, like in a dungeon. Just be sure you aren't dying. If you are gonna die, then make sure you have Vow to get back on top of the threat list. For our daily powers, Divine Judgment for threat, you'll use that at the beginning. Again, just like here, initiating the fight on Xemnid, we go there, we use our Templars and other Templars. We wanna be getting our daily power, but we'll get it for the artifact call. There you go. And then he's 
biting us, we use our daily, and the next time he hits us, we get a massive hit from the Manticore during the artifact call because of the helmet. Deals 50% of your hit points in damage affected by debuffs, and I've seen it hit for like 1.7 million. Multiplied by your increased threat modifier, and uh, yeah, it's a ton of effective damage. Otherwise, it's Shield of Faith just for team support. Gives them survivability, and with this feat, helps heal them as well. If you need your own extra survivability, you're running into content new or you're a bit insecure and aren't having like the most optimized build, run Divine Protector combined with Shield of the Gods. You kind of need a second loadout for that. A bit annoying, but it would give you a bunch of extra survivability, giving you the awareness and damage reduction. You can see that again here with the feet. You don't need to be tethered to an ally and you reduce the damage you take by 30% and increase your awareness by 30%. Not for very long so you want to make sure you time it when you need it generally just go with this support setup though for your mechanics you have your block and you just be using that to block incoming attacks as much as possible and then regenerate that block back basically healing it and just blocking more hits and binding oath is your primary source of regenerating your block back your block is equal to 40 percent of your maximum hit points you then have your tab ability divine champion you'll block half of the incoming damage and then if you combine it with the feat just here you'll basically increase your block to 60% of your max HP. Then while you're in Divine Champion, you can go and you can use your Divine Palisade. So that's when you block while within this stance. When you do this, you create a cone behind you and then you and everybody in the cone receive 10% less damage and you also heal everybody behind you. So pretty good for survivability tool when everybody's gonna take a big hit and you need to prepare for mitigation. Just be aware again, it takes a lot of practice getting used to mechanics and knowing when and what to block, when to use your tab ability. Just keep in mind it drains divinity over time while you're in this stance and you need that divinity for Templar's Wrath for your threat. So there won't be a lot of time and opportunity for you to use Divine Champion, which is unfortunate since you're sacrificing threat for survivability and you need to be holding the threat of the enemy or you're just letting everybody die. Class features we just run with composure and aura of wrath aura of wrath increases everybody's crit rate i don't see any of the other options as all too useful you shouldn't need the reduction to everybody's threat especially in a trial there's no point in reducing your other teammates tanks threat just give them all bunch of crit strike and they'll be happy with that and composure to regenerate your divinity back a little bit quicker there might be some time you'll have to use divine challenger combined with smite to have a bit more often your place at the top of the threatless powers if you're going into master zariel and need to switch on the second phase between the demons you don't want to have an aoe taunt and end up getting both the demons that's pretty much the only fight that it really matters potentially in crown of keldegon as well between velindra and palavorthine you don't you want to keep them separate you might also need uh, to smite and divine challenger then for your feats we're just going with this setup here the first one will increase the effectiveness of your sacred weapon. I don't really use it, so kind of pointless, but sacred weapon can be useful if you need a bit more threat, but I generally can be just better to have a place yourself on top of the threat list if you're suffering with threat anyway. And then burning vengeance to buff up your burning light. Whenever you use that in AOE fights, I don't really see baneful strikes as all too useful unless you're making some hybrid damage build, which your damage is gonna suck, especially after the recent combat re a year ago, kind of screwed us over and then you have divine pursuit to find it better to de generate divinity than the top one and then sheltering light again we mentioned it with the daily powers here sheltering light for team support shield of the gods for your own survivability and the last feat absolutely undying champion the top feat here intimidating presence doesn't seem to have much effect at all it increases your threat by 30 percent but you already have this benefit here, increasing your threat by 900%, and then anything with increased threat here from your Oath Strike and your Templar's Wrath have another 800% threat on that. So adding 30% is nothing, and you won't notice it. So kind of pointless, you're better off with survivability, 
benefit here of increasing your shield to 60% and reducing the divinity drain. So we move to our statistics. As a tank, you want to be focusing on primarily damage reduction first. So anything that's going to give you damage reduction, like this lich right here and the overload resiliency of the depths. Then you want to be focusing on your awareness, then your critical avoidance, then your defense, and then you want to look at your stamina regen, your incoming healing, and then your, like your maximum hit points. It can be a balance between either incoming healing or maximum hit points. Depends on your healer. If you're running with a paladin healer, it can give you shields. Basically, increasing your incoming healing makes it so that their shields are bigger on you, which can be better than just increasing your max hit points. And then you also want some action point gain. Just again, focus on if you're a newer tank, getting those damage resistance sources that you possibly can, and then your awareness, critical avoidance, and defense. Yes, awareness won't be too beneficial when you're going against adds, but they're not as important as boss fights at all. You can generally crowd control adds and they do nothing, and then they're not gonna hit you. So we move to our gear. And you can see what I'm running with. This headpiece is from Dragon Hunts with the Manticore Bite. You use it for the threat. Whenever you use your daily power, you want to use it during the artifact call. So you gain the increased damage buffs. And then you get the Manticore's Bite, which is another massive hit. And it'll just help a ton with your threat. The armor here comes from the Sharandar store doing Voss. Just gives you a bunch of awareness rating. When we're in a party, we gain another 6,000. And then we can gain some Mount Aura bonuses to get to the maximum of that 82,000. Then we have the arms here from Dragon Hunts. They work better than expected. You just need one ally 30 feet away from you and you gain the bonus power and defense. Then the weapons, we have the Feywood ones here. I would recommend just getting the cheaper alternatives as the mastered ones. There's no point going for the full Feywood. On the weapons, we have the modification of Ode Strike here and the secondary one, the action points and the enhanced critical avoidance. The boots are the rugged boots again from Dragon Hunts. The neck, waist and artifact set that we obtain here comes from Master Tiamat. It's very expensive and so most people, I wouldn't go for it unless you can actually run Master Tiamat. Much cheaper sets and alternatives I would recommend from the North Dark. You can get the Assassin's Dice set here and you can get the Tentacle Rod set here. We'll just give you a bit, a bunch of base stats. For our rings, we have a List Race Tenacity from Master Temple of the Spider and we have this Stalwart Needle Ring of Celerity from your Dragon Hunts. Highly recommend both of those. However, it can depend on what fights you're in. You might have seen this ring, the Bulwark Ring, but it doesn't work. I've tested it still, it's still broken and doesn't reduce the damage you take from dragons. So kind of pointless. And otherwise, yes, this new trial, you might be wanting to take your Lolth's Pain damage reduction from Beholders. And I personally would just run with Listra's Tenacity and Lolth's Pain for this new trial, just for the increased damage reduction. There's not much point having the Celerity Ring here because you only need it for the adds at the very beginning. We will go over capped on defense a little bit with having Lolth's Pain, but you can adjust that yourself. For the shirt, we run with the movement speed in Underdark. If you're not in Underdark, there's alternatives like the Rugged one or this one right here with the 8% damage reduction from Drow and Spiders. For our pants, we have these ones right here that give us a bunch of defense, 5%, whenever we take a hit of 15% or higher, which is most of the time. Then alternatives you have again, like the vibrant ones, the valiant ones from Dragon Hunts, and then you can get ones with like 5% action points, 5% stamina, 5% movement speed. And uh, yeah, those just all come from Menze Brands in Heroic Encounters, and these vibrant legendary ones come from your Dragon Hunts. Then for like your kits, your armor kits, we have just critical avoidance here and some hit points, and uh, that's about it across those. Then for our neck, rings, and waist, we just have stamina regen all the way. We don't need the extra awareness, but you could have awareness in there if you don't have that maxed out. Enchantments, you can see the tab right here. We just have jades all in defense that gives us our critical avoidance. We have a cobalt in utility that gives us incoming healing. On live, I do not have a cobalt and I'll probably just throw a garnet in there. And then you can see in our offense, it doesn't really matter, but optimally you'll just have a bunch of garnets. Again, on live, I'll probably have one citrine there and like one garnet here. 
you can see my overloads, resiliency of the depth, and an underdark lurker. Again, the underdark lurker only in underdark content, of course. Alternative to that is getting a bulwark of brimstone for the hit points or a unholy protection for the stats. Combat enchantment, I'm running the flash freeze. I haven't found the other enchantments to be all too useful. Living Hex seems kind of pointless. I have not noticed its effect at all in the new trial. I ran a whole bunch with it. I ran with Fortified Nature. I ran with Flash Freeze. And all between them, I have not noticed any big difference. Fortified Nature is great, but only works if you take a damage over time effect that's going to proc every two seconds at minimum so outside of that it's kind of useless for newer tanks i would highly recommend a soul shield you can even just run it on green just the benefit of instantly resurrecting you and healing you a bit is really helpful when you're going down in a fight you can instantly get up don't have to mess around with scrolling or something and then go and taunt your enemy and yeah as a tank if you are going down in a fight you kind of do want to be scrolling instantly and getting a threat back of the enemy otherwise that enemy is just going to go and kill all your teammates which is silly so i just run with a flash freeze it's a bit of team support doesn't work that great anymore but when it does it's just a little bit of survivability for everybody bonus enchantment we have the movement speed just so we can get around the place a bit faster to do mechanics so on plenty of movement things but you can run action points instead and i would recommend it if you're in a fight where you know you're not really gonna have to move you can spam more dailies which is better for our artifacts you can see we just have two secondaries here and the sole purpose is to provide us the stamina regen alternatives you can run are listed just here of course we have the artifact to complete our set and then we have a primary artifact which is going to be team support so we have like the lantern here and again i would recommend one of these top 11 to have at least to also provide team support you can see the bonus damage that they can provide there and the duration and i've ranked them kind of here based on their benefits to the team so now we move to our race and ability scores there are a lot of viable options as a tank you can run human, metallic ancestry, dragonborn, a dwarf, halfling, a tiefling, a drow, dragonborn, asmar, or menzibrands and renegade. Those are ones I suggest. The reason I'm running drow is for the dark fire to reduce the enemy's defense so that our allies can deal more damage to them. I personally run an Azimar most of the time on the live server because it provides a bonus to both tank and healer on your paladin and I think it's one of the best there because it also provides hit points to your team which is survivability but don't be afraid to take alternatives don't feel you have to unlock a premium race the benefits aren't that big again I'm personally running drow which you get for free so when you go to set your ability scores for the drow, I would recommend dexterity and charisma, but optimally you want to go for constitution and charisma all the way as your tank. Again, this is a paladin tank. However, I'm still a bit on the fence of taking charisma or strength. You'd take strength just for the stamina regen, but I like the recharge speed from charisma. So we move to our companions. And here we first of all have our summoned companion and I recommend one again that provides team support. One that's going to give a bonus that benefits your entire party. Again here we have a list of all the alternatives and I would recommend to get like the Spine Devil, Drids, Portobello, Tutor, Black Death, Scorpion and then like the Lion, Bruner. Those top seven are very good to have. For our companion gear, we're just running critical avoidance and incoming healing. This stuff here is a little bit lower item level than the maximum, and it comes from doing your Master Crown of Keldegon or by doing your adventure, the Scale Blight Summit, multiple times. You can get higher item level stuff from the North Dark Reaches just here. However, there's not such great tank stuff. If you're a newer tank, you can probably get away with going with the defense and awareness one there. I know for my build, I'll have too many ratings. It's quite expensive, 250,000 Astro Diamonds, and to get three pieces, that's nearly yeah, like a million. And then otherwise, the single stats ones would be a little bit better, and I would just take a bunch of the incoming healing ones and try to find a way to get a little bit more critical avoidance to make up for what you'd miss from here now for our bonuses right here we have our companion enhancement and here i would recommend again taking a team support one one that's going to benefit the entire team we're currently running armor break as it provides the 
most amount of damage to our team. Again, that's at 50% enemy defense. You can see the other bonuses there, and you could take weapon break. It'll give survivability to everybody against that enemy, so when they do certain mechanics, it's going to reduce their critical severity. As long as that boss can critically hit with those powers, you can reliably reduce that critical hit damage by reducing the crit severity. It's the only one right now that's going to provide survivability. The rest there are just going to provide damage to your team. The worst one being slowed reactions, which is dependent on how much accuracy people miss. Then for our equip bonuses, you can see what I'm running here. Again, there are alternatives, but I would highly recommend you take a tamed Velociraptor. And this gives the bonus power. Not really going to benefit you as the tank for survivability, but it benefits your healers and your DPS so that they can heal more and deal more damage. It's a massive power bonus, and you don't really want to be missing out on giving your team that. So we use that in our offense. The other options, I would highly recommend you get a Lich Companion. I know it can be pretty expensive, but currently it's the best companion there. There are alternatives, and here again is a table. You can see them ranked there as well. Tamed Raptors there with a star. It's not going to help you, but it's going to help your teammates. The best is the Feral Raptor, but you would need again everybody to use it like the Tamed one. And uh, there's not much chance of that since the Feral is very exclusive and really expensive at the moment. The devs basically need to re-release it into the game. You can see the Lich there, the Deep Crow, the Myconid. Just don't, you don't need to copy exactly what I have as these can probably be pretty expensive. Just have a look for yourself and take what works and what fits. Just be aware of the slot types. We have a requirement of one offense, one defense, one utility, and then there are two universal slots. So again, don't be afraid to take ones further down the list. It's not bad at all. They're still all giving you bonuses to your tank. I have them all on the list here because they're all viable. So now we move to our mounts. And in our current tab here, you want to be having a combat power again, which is going to provide team support. You'll use it with your artifact every 60 seconds to give your party an additional damage boost. There are other survivability ones you could use. And again, here is my table. You can see them all ranked there as well. Eclipse, Lion and Swarm are like the best. You want to have both those in like a dungeon. Your healer will have the other one. And then you can see the rest of them listed and ranked there as well. You can see all their benefits. Then as your equip power, you want to have like Runic Aura or Mystic Aura or your new pack tactics. Pack tactics comes from the Ebon Riding Lizard. Mystic Aura comes from your Myconid Poulet. And your Runic Aura comes from that Manticore. You can get them on the trade bar store. In our stable tab, you can see what we have here. 15 insignias, bunch of fortitude and courage. And that is it. You see the bonuses. We have two Shepherds Devotion and three Gladiator Skull. Why? Gladiator Skull for the movement speed and the stamina regen. Shepherd's Devotion to provide, again, movement speed to your team and yourself. And a defense bonus. So it'll help them with survivability. And I personally think there's no real need to go for the insignia bonuses that might, let's say, help heal you. You're going to have ones like Champion's Return, Oppressor's Reprieve, Survivor's Blessing, Knight's Rebuke. They're going to all help you heal you. And they're great. And I would recommend them when your healer is not that great or you don't even have a healer so there's the new one lionheart's preservance as well i just don't see them overly necessary you can see a log right here champions return just like one percent of the incoming healing and oppressors reprieve also only like one percent of our incoming healing so they really don't contribute much at all when running with an actual healer if you want to min max you can get the red dragon wings from the zen store and get shepherd's devotion on there to have a fourth insignia slot and that just gives you a little bit more stats and item level you can see the colors right here your main focus is to get the stamina gain one the incoming healing and the action point gain then you can also get the encounter power damage for threat and then whatever for practical i would recommend the rough astral diamonds so now we move to our boons in our stronghold tab here we take our power our awareness we can switch the awareness to like incoming healing or hit points when we get a bunch more pack tactics from like our 
healers and such and that might give us too much awareness and we would have the ability to switch it in our campaign boons you just want to be taking all the defensive ones here along with some hit points along with the damage and damage resistance against enemy types movement speed and then also lingering medicine it's very good for healing you for like five percent of your maximum hit points over 30 seconds like every tick is five percent of your max hp heals a lot in tier five you want to be taking like incoming healing and actual point gain you can switch to like stamina regen and forte depending on your build and your stats master boon there's not really any great ones you can go with your focused retaliation it'll give you a bunch more deflect every now and again not very reliable i was messing around with blessed resilience and sheltering light with our shield of faith and see if i can proc that on people with that i actually still didn't properly test that so lastly we move to our consumables what we use to get our stats buffed up well again you would only really use these in tough content you'd have your caprice you have the crafted potion of defense you have your elixir of steadfast devotion and your chocolate and then of course you can run an invocation blessing as well we could get some extra awareness there you'll have to use it multiple times until you get the book Again, our awareness will be capped out when in a party. And then we also have on our belt item, a stone of health, of course. We have the dragon fire, which is actually very useful for threat. It deals a ton of damage. You can see it right here. It's the most damage we dealt, followed by the manticore, which is just the helmet. So we deal a lot of damage just from some items and from, from bonuses then compared to our powers. And then lastly, the chain of scales. You can look up my video how to get this and how to get it upgraded, but it gives us the awareness, which is very nice. For that food, you'll get caprice from, yeah, doing your summer festival i would actually recommend to take moon cakes instead it comes from your feast of lanterns it's bound when you obtain it so you won't be finding it on the auction house or your fizzy brew 10 percent movement speed and awareness but that's very expensive and not obtainable anymore this potion comes from crafting you can get it off the auction house this elixir comes from your vault of piety and the chocolate comes from your guild stronghold that is about it for my build in conclusion it works very well you are going to suffer a bit with survivability compared to a fighter because you have to balance a lot more between your survivability and your threat you're basically again using your divinity for threat instead of survivability so can be pretty annoying right there. I might look into switching the headpiece over to the new one that would give us extra 20% divinity regen. See how effective that is on a tank, but I would have to make sure I switch one of my rings over to a manticore bite ring. So you would have like your tanner's ring. So you have like your tanner's leather ring. There's a epic version of this you can get very cheap and it'll basically have the exact same manticore's bite bonus. We'll see. I'll probably still keep optimizing and messing around with things. But as of now, this is my build and it works very well. My team has had a lot of mix between different players and we still actually haven't beaten it. But we're getting there and it's doing pretty good. I have hopes we can get through this trial very soon. But you definitely need a very good optimized build to be able to tank this properly. At least if you're going to be making mistakes and your healers might not be on the ball either. So again, hopefully this helps and we'll see you guys around. Goodbye for now. Don't.